Going through the void. This is chapter 13 of spiritual growth, being your higher self. This is a book that we have been going through chapter by chapter, written by Sanaya Roman, and it has a total of 21 chapters. We're a little more than halfway done. This chapter is very important. This chapter is talking about going through the void, a time of spiritual growth. And seemingly to us, especially if it's our first time going through it, it can feel like uh, much confusion and disarray. So there's a lot of value in listening to this uh, discussion. So I want to welcome you aboard. And before we get going, I want to encourage you to please subscribe to the channel if you're not already done so. This is True Higher Self. Our essence and what we talk about on an ongoing basis are ways to... Increase our level of consciousness, become our best self, i.e. become our higher, our true higher selves. Uh, There's a lot of value in what we're discussing here on the channel for those of us who are always looking to grow in our levels of consciousness. Now, having said that, we have a free gift for you in the uh, description below. Uh, We have uh, developed a free daily meditation and yoga practice uh, book. And it is yours free. Uh, So just subscribe, uh, plug your email in there, and the book will be in your inbox uh, post haste. So let's get going here on chapter 13. Uh, This, again, the title is Going Through the Void. And I found this, uh, again, I've read this book a few times and I read it once or twice a year just to go back and really uh, reaffirm foundationally you know, what you believe is, and I believe it's always something good to do. And going through the void is a particularly interesting chapter because it is a part in our lives uh, when we go through spiritual growth that as we go from level to level, we we need to understand that, for example, when you uh, put an intention out to the universe, uh, it's going to be accepted, yes, number one, but also it's going to be tested. So I always tell people the only way you can really have a testimony is to be tested. So that thing that you say you want to display, let's say, for example, uh, it's your goal to be a more loving and more kind person and a less judgmental person. Well, okay, great. That's that's very uh, admirable. Well, what will happen? The universe will now provide you with opportunities to test that. So you may come in contact with people who are very difficult to deal with, uh, even in your own family, more than likely in your own family. Why? Because now it's time to develop that skill set. And so two things can happen here. Number one, you can witness this, observe it as your higher self, see what the value is in it, understand what the universe is doing. That's number one, successfully move through it. But number two, a lot of people uh, see this as uh, an opportunity to quit or to or to fail, if you will, uh, in their in their um, moving forward. You know, it's too difficult. People are, you know, not so good. And, and it's just hard to deal with people. Well, yeah, it, it, it is. But if you want to become more loving, less judgmental. Uh, the only way to do it uh, is being tested and, and having to deal with people. So my point is this. The universe provides us with opportunity, yes, for growth, but also opportunity to test the skill sets that we say we want. So let's get going. Uh, the void is a state of consciousness. It's a state of consciousness that you get into when you are expanding your current limits. You're letting go of old things and you're moving to higher levels of consciousness. In the void, you leave behind things that are familiar to you, your habits, your thoughts, your behaviors and your attitudes. And then you go deep into creating new ones that match your higher vibration. You can't become your higher self and hold on to your old thoughts. I think that is a reasonable uh, assessment that we all uh, should make. But, you know, bearing the obvious, I want to point that out. Uh, Once you commit to wanting to become your true higher self, you must understand that a lot of habitual behavior must be left behind. That's your thoughts, your emotions, and even sometimes your networks and people that you're hanging around. Now, in the state uh, that, you know, going through the void in that state, you can receive insights and you can do much inner work. You can get a lot of stuff done in the void. It can last for minutes, hours, days or even months. You'll experience the void throughout your spiritual journey. 
and it is your ability to live near the void. Go into it at will and make it your friend. That will assist you in growing even faster and with more joy. So just imagine if uh, there's a bird, for example, and it's flying on a particular plane. Let's say it's at 10,000 feet, but it says, you know what? I want to fly higher. I want to fly at 12,000. Well, it begins to move from 10,000 to 12,000, not knowing that maybe there is some rough air on, you know, uh, that 11,000 level. And it's trying to get to 12, but it's really difficult. Uh, Maybe it sinks below 10. Maybe it gets pushed down. Maybe it's hard. Uh, Maybe it's cold. Maybe it's harder to breathe. Who knows? But uh, he's striving to get to that 12,000 level. And uh, once he does successfully get there, he finds out a lot about himself, how, you know, committed he is to the task, how tough he uh, he or she may be in terms of uh, getting uh, to where he wants to go. And then really being able to strengthen itself by getting to the 12, uh, 12,000 level. He's able to fly this successfully. And that's what happens with us in life. We witness a particular area that we want to be in. We want to live in higher levels of consciousness, higher levels of abundance. It requires a, a different person. We have to become that. We have to become that. Now, the void occurs when you are letting go of an aspect of your personality, of your personality self that no longer fits uh, who you are becoming. It represents a new level of surrendering your personality to the guidance of your higher self. So you are becoming your higher self. It's the birth of a new part of your higher self into this reality. You're releasing your old ego personality and you're embracing and birthing your new higher self personality. Now, you may feel like something is happening inside, but not see any changes in your life yet. It's not a comfortable place for your personality, which likes to see things as certain and secure. Every void, every void is marked by issues of the heart. You find yourself asking deep questions such as how can I love and accept myself more? Am I lovable? Who am I? Can I have what I want? What would I do with the love of my life? You may find that you feel softer and more loving toward others in this time of uncertainty. Now, you're raising your vibration, expanding beyond your old habits and patterns. In the void, you may have less desire than usual for intimate physical contact. Why? Uh, Intimate physical contact intertwines your aura with another's. And during this time, you're avoiding and you want to you're in the void. You're clearing your aura of other people's energy as part of the process of raising your vibration. So as you're in the void, you know, a lot of times uh, it's kind of like, um, you know, being in your cave. This is a, a, a simile that I've used before when it comes to men, men, you know, a, a man cave and that sort of thing. Men think this way. I won't say all, but the large majority that a, when a problem arises, Uh, A man is very systematic in terms of how he approaches it. And normally he goes into an area, you know, let's call it the silence. So let's call it his cave. But he's normally quiet or he's focused until he can figure it out. And he'll come out of the cave, kind of like a bear. And uh, that's what we're, you know, uh, talking about here. When you're in the void, uh, you tend to want to spend less time around people, but more on the spiritual side because you're cleansing your aura. And you're adding to yourself. And quite honestly, this has happened to me before where uh, I've not really wanted to be around certain people and I, I've, I've not avoided them. But it just so happens I haven't made a great effort to be around them. And so the relationship sort of wanes off or declines, which is fine because you're going to a higher vibration. And sometimes the networks that you currently have, they don't match where you're going. So if you're tied to your friends and tied to your networks, uh, that's going to be a challenge because your higher self uh, may not be, may not be. Now, the desire to be alone, even feelings of loneliness are reflections of your deepening desire to connect with your higher self. In your deeper wisdom, you know that your connection to others is not a substitute for a deeper connection to your higher self. You know, it's more important to be connected to your higher self. 
And as you spend time alone, you get to know yourself better. Now, you also may feel physically different, either over-energized or wanting to sleep more than usual. Sleep provides time for inner work to take place, and you may need more sleep to integrate all the internal changes that are going on. So just be aware of that. And also in the process of raising your vibration, you sometimes pass through a period of confusion. In the void, the new is not yet established, and the old hasn't yet passed away, hasn't left. They exist both side by side. This can create confusion until things get sorted out. And I've also been there where you know that, or at least you have faith and confidence that you're moving in the right direction. Uh, You're not really seeing a lot of changes. You still hold to your faith and to your belief, uh, but you're seeing some things that, you know, remind you of all. What you just have to do is stick to it. You just have to bear down, stick to it, spend your time in meditation and silence. Keep your positive habitual thought patterns going and live in the end as Neville Goddard has said. And eventually the manifestation will be yours. Now, you may wonder if you're losing your memory. You may also have more trouble than usual making quick decisions or knowing what you want. These are all symptoms of being in the void, potential symptoms. In the void, your thoughts may be different than usual. It's if you're measuring things by a new standard, which you are. It is as if you are shining a powerful light on your life and seeing things in a brand new way. Now, nothing can be uh, the doorway, not knowing, I'm sorry, can be the doorway to true knowing, not knowing. We talked a little bit before a couple uh, chapters ago about um, uncertainty the power of uncertainty and and detachment. Uh, This is uh, very similar. Not knowing can be the doorway to true knowing. And of course, uh, if you came up like I did in religion and and, and these sorts of things, uh, this was not something that was taught to us. Uh, We find a lot of comfort, a lot of security in knowing exactly. you know, this reminds me of something that uh, Jesus indicated. You know, he said, witness, you know, the, you, know the, you can see the lilies of the field and, and the birds of the sky. You know, they, they, they don't toil. They don't worry where their next meal is coming from because, you know, our Heavenly Father is taking care of them. Yet man, uh, higher consciousness, man uh, tends to worry about things that uh, other Uh, uh, beings don't really worry about because they know that things will always work out. So we've got to take on that attitude. Now, the void is a time of not knowing. It'll feel like a state of not doing or of nothingness, basically. It's only when you stop knowing in your normal way and experience not knowing that you can connect with new knowledge. So that's important enough to say again. It's only when you stop knowing in your normal way of knowing and you need to experience the not knowing that you can connect with new knowledge in other words you've got to unlearn some stuff you've got some stuff in your head it's not benefiting you so we're going to release that and in releasing that we're going to replace it with new stuff but in the interim you may not really know what's going on and that's okay Many of you fear the void because it offers neither a solid foundation nor a clear identity. What you have identified with may be changing to allow you to grow into a greater identity. Allow yourself to go into the void for a few minutes every day. Silence your mind. Let yourself explore the nothingness. Silence is a doorway to greater knowing. And you'll discover a richness of energy beyond description rather than nothing. Each time you go into the void, you'll come out a level higher. Now, as your connection to your higher self grows stronger, you draw yourself to many new opportunities that match your high vibration. That's a great benefit. That's a great benefit. Because the things that we want, they're vibrating high. And in order for us to receive them, we also need to be vibrating high. Consider yourself that bird. If you're on the 10,000 foot level, and let's imagine if our Uh, relationships and weight loss and entrepreneurships, all those things that we want are up above us. Well, how do we get to them? We must raise our vibration. 
Take time to fantasize and daydream every day. You may find yourself thinking of the future often and how things could be different. Of course, that's going to be beneficial to you. And as you raise your vibration, you will probably find yourself in the void more and more often. So get used to it. Accept it. You can be experiencing the void in one area of your life and not in others. For example, uh, your job may be great, but certain relationships may be you know, undergoing a big change. So identify, observe, and realize what's taking place. And if you're experiencing the void in any area of your life, be loving to yourself. Don't worry if no direction has yet revealed itself. You're raising your vibration rapidly in this area, doing much inner work and opening your heart to love yourself more. As you do this, new circumstances will start appearing that are better than what you had in the past. And that's what we're all looking for. There's always a turning point while you are in the void. There comes a moment at which a deep inner note is sounded. There's a moment when a shift takes place, when you become clearer about what you want, your self-love is greater, and you know within yourself that you're ready to start creating what you want. Now, don't rush into a decision just to have something more fixed and secure once again. The universe works in perfect ways. Remind yourself of this. And there are good reasons if things are changing. I always do this because sometimes, um, you know, sometimes you feel really good and really secure, really confident. uh, And then sometimes you don't. But nothing really has changed other than the way that you feel. Your I amness has not changed. Your connectivity to the universe has not changed. Who you are at its core and essence hasn't changed. Which changes the way that you feel and you are not your body. So witness and observe the emotions as they come and go. Their ebbs and flows, just like thoughts come and go, emotions come and go. It is no need for panic because you feel different on Monday versus on Friday. The universe works in perfect ways is what I always remind myself of. And I am part of that. I'm a unique as you are. I'm a unique and individual expression of the universe. And the universe is for me. The universe wants me to succeed. The universe wants you to succeed. Trust the universe. As you come out of the void, you'll find yourself wanting to reconnect with people, perhaps in new and more expansive ways. You'll feel more certain about what you want and you can have a greater sense of purpose. Love the void, for even though nothing seems to be happening, it's a time when much inner work is being done. It's a time when much inner work is being done. Go for it. Reach for the stars. Picture having everything you want. You may even find yourself learning to love the void for the opportunity it offers to take quantum leaps and accelerate your growth, your spiritual growth. Guys, I really love this chapter because it speaks to the tougher parts of the journey sometimes where, you know, we are growing. We don't really uh, feel great. Uh, we feel confused sometimes. Some things that we we uh, have had in our lives are leaving, but it's making room for new things. So remind yourself that the universe works in perfect ways and that the universe is for you. And when you are feeling less than or down or confused, just continue to tell yourself that everything works out for my good, that uh, accept the fact that you are loved. The universe is for you. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this today. I'd ask you to continue to come back and hang out with us. We're going to have content like this for you several times a week. I hope you have an empowering week. If you're not done so already, please go and subscribe and also sign up for our uh, free uh, ebook there for the um, uh, personal daily yoga practice and meditation. So that's a really powerful tool to have. So thanks for joining us. Have a great day.